Where is Christ now? Let's talk about that. How's it going, everyone? My name is Pastor Jeremy. Today, we're looking at question number 49 of the New City Catechism, and we're gonna answer that question. Where is Christ? Christ rose bodily from the dead on the third day after his death and is now seated the right hand of God the Father. Don't believe me? You don't need to take my word for it. Let's look at Ephesians chapter one to find out what the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus and how that gives us a clue and an understanding of where Christ is now. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you. We love you. That you are so good to bring us from death into life. That you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing. That you, Jesus, are now seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. God, help us to see that truth today. It's your name we pray. Amen. So you saw there the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. He, he starts out in verse 15 giving the, the reason and, and of hearing of their faith and giving them encouragement, uh, praying for them that they may see these hard things and hard truths of God, reminding them that they have been, uh, their hearts have been enlightened, they've been regenerated, they've been made alive, they can see these things clearly. And what are these things? The hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his great might, then he continues to say that he raised Jesus from the dead. So we see these things when, when we are made alive by God and we see these truths and, and Paul is outlining them in scripture and he tells us, he simply says, where is Jesus? seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. He's always there for us. Now, some will say, I thought Jesus comes into my heart and Jesus is in my heart. Well, that's language that we've used that may not be very accurate as to what the Bible actually says. So maybe we should stop using the language of Jesus is in your heart. God sends the Holy Spirit to be with us, and then we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And yes, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all co-eternal, but they are different. So to say that Jesus is living in my heart isn't an accurate statement. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And that's good news for you and for me because that means that we who have a high priest who kept the law perfectly, we who have an intercessor on our behalf, we have Jesus who has taken sin, our sin on him, is constantly there interceding for you and for me before the Father. So that's where Jesus is. He was raised bodily and ascended into heaven, making a way for mankind to be in relationship with God, being the, the trailblazer, the first to do that. And now, and now week two, one day when we are called home, when our time here is done, we too will be in the presence of the Father. Those who trust in Jesus for salvation, those who have cast their worries and their fears upon him and believed upon him and, and follow him and do what his word says. 
And when we are called home, when our time on this planet is done, we now can be in the presence of the Father because of the sacrifice of the Son. So where is Christ? He's seated at the right hand of the Father. That's why we have that in the Apostles' Creed. Where did they get that from? They got that from Ephesians chapter 1. So if anyone wonders where Jesus is, now you know. And you don't have to take my word for it. It's what the Apostle Paul said. Friends, thank you so much for joining us for this video. I'd encourage you to check out our playlist where we have 48 other videos right now. And eventually we'll have 52 videos on the New City Catechism answering these questions, pointing to scripture so that we may be able to understand why we believe what we believe. It's important that we know what we believe and be able to give a defense of it. So I thank you for joining us. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.